Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we're going to be checking out a new beta tool that is for iOS devices, specifically iPads. I don't think this would be much use on an iPhone, but apparently it does run on them. And basically it is a shader creator. And I've always had this kind of fascination with developing on the go. I love the idea of using an iPad to do primarily game creation. And frankly, if the iOS file system was friendlier, uh, it would be a great way to actually develop games. Going back to the very beginning of this YouTube channel, in fact, you will see the first version I did or the first video I did formally on this channel was a look at Kodia. And Kodia is an iPad programming system. And why that is of relevance to this video? Well, the guys that made it, the guys down at um, work at Kodia and Two Lives Left that make Kodia, well, they are the people behind the shade beta. So if you're interested in grabbing the shade beta, there is this link right here. I will share this down below. This was just released a couple of days ago. So uh, 10 days back, uh, they, they tweeted this out. There's also an, uh, a link to a tutorial on basically how you can get started creating shaders. But if you want this guy, what you have to do is install the test flight app on your iPad or iOS device. And then you click this link and you will basically join up. Now this is available for free in beta, but it looks like it will ultimately be commercial's product. And it looks like it's gonna probably be like uh, about 60 bucks. So can it justify that cost? Well, that will be interesting to see. But without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at Shade in action. Now do keep in mind, we are dealing with a beta software here. So give it some time. It's going to change over time. But another problem I've got is I am capturing a um, iOS device uh, using Reflector on my Windows machine. So you're not going to get, unfortunately, I can't give you a nice 16 by nine picture here because an iOS or iPad is a four by three device. So this is about the best I can do. Sorry about that guys. Uh, but here you can see, this is actually capturing my iPad screen in real time. And this here is shade. Now any lag or performance problems you see, that's because of the capture on my end. This thing runs pretty much flawlessly. And as you can see, you can start off with a variety of different shaders here or we can come up here and um, narrow it down by uh, various different examples. Now I actually blew away the ripple example, so I'll let it restore and get all the ones that are back to what we want. Now you see here, we've got a number of different examples to start from, or we could create our own new shader uh, from scratch. So I could do plus right here, and we can either do blank or a photo filter, but instead of showing you me stumbling through creating a shader, I'll click cancel, and I will instead show you one of their examples. Now what you see going on here, this is how you ultimately build your shader. It's, it's a pretty typical process if you've used any kind of a shader builder, but the cool thing is you can do this on the go. So if you wanna develop shaders on the bus, on the toilet, uh, you can do it. Uh, if you have a iPad device, it, it, the performance is silky smooth. I'm running an iPad, oh God, I think they call it an iPad. Apple has the dumbest naming conventions, but I think it's technically an iPad 4. So it's not a pro, it's not the newest version, it's about two years old, and I've never run into any performance issues with playing with this thing so far. So you see bottom right hand corner, that is a preview of our shader in action. Now I can mouse over that and you can actually see it shift around. I can also double tap and we'll bring up the uh, configuration of that model. So I could switch this guy out to use say a quad, a cube, make the shader apply on a sphere, but I'll go back to making it a plane. You can press this green uh, border here and minimize that back down. Now what you'll notice right here, this is the output of your shader. Um, this is the end result. So this is where your diffuse, your rough map, your metallic, your emission opacity, normal occlusion, offset, opacity clip, and behind. I'm not actually sure what behind is, but that is where all of your final outputs go. You'll notice there are no connections or pins on the right. So this is the final end result. And what you do is is connect and create basically a graph of computations that are ultimately your shader. So let's take a look at this one left to right. So this is creating this ripple effect we can see here. First off, we start off with the UV as a coordinate in, multiply by distance, we take a time value and a floating point value of 50, multiply them together and we create this end result sine wave. You can turn the preview on and off if you so wish. Uh, again, it's all a matter of, let me just minimize that, get that out of the way, a matter of connecting to the pins on the left hand side. And then we're going to take the R value of that and you can connect it into the UV and various other pieces. You see here, we've got some swiveling going on. You can change values and remap them on the fly. And then what we've done here is we take the height to a normal, uh, calculate that out. We blend the normals together and then we're creating this end result. 
So you can see each stage, again, a preview of what your calculations are coming up with. So you, if you look here at this blend normal, you can actually see the normal map that's being generated on the fly by all of our calculations. And then here is, again, the end result. Looks very, very cool. Now let's say if we wanted to go ahead and get rid of some of this, um, this texturing stuff here. So we've, we've taken the UV and we're basically applying a noise texture to it to give us these rippling effects. Now let's say we didn't ultimately want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect this pin here and this pin here. And what we will instead do is just raw connect the output from our height map over here to our normal map. And there you see the end result is just a smooth version. We can also bring this guy up to see a bigger picture version of it, or we can kind of lower it down. So that is essentially the, um, the process in a nutshell. Now, if you want to start adding more things to it, you can bring up this command line palette over here, and this is where you can get all your input. So you saw, like, say we wanted to just have a raw color. I could come down here, grab color. Now, it's a little finicky about where you grab it. So click and hold, and we can just drag that node in. So now you see we have a color node. I can double tap that and then bring up the color selector. Oops. Come on. And so, for example, if I want this to be purplish, like so, and let's pick a purple color there. So now you see I've got that color set. And now I can bring that color pin out to anywhere else that I want. So say if I had a texture that I wanted to bring in, I could bring in the texture value this way. And if I wanted to feed in inputs to it, so you see I come down here so I could bring in the camera position from the outside world. And we could drag that in. And then that XYZ value could go to whatever we needed an XYZ value to in this particular case. Uh, and then we've got a number of different inputs, as you can see here, including even the microphone, uh, scene color, timeline. So we can actually have it go, you know, if our shader has over time, see right there, we can double tap that again and configure the speed or the frequency that that is operating at um, and so on and so forth. We'll bring that back to the palette, drag that out. Come on. Palette, and then you see we've got calculations here. So pretty much all of the little basic bits that you would use to compose a shader are here in graph form. So there's all your different math routines. Uh, there's your geometric routines, uh, your trig routines. Uh, you can create noise. We got generators, so, like, so I can create a height map to normal map. I got a gradient creator, organizational things. We can also group our stuff together just for more logical ways of doing things. Um, we can create local variables. Uh, we can have experimental things like parallax, prop, and error. I don't know what error is. And then we've got ray marching support. So these are the various different, basically building blocks you use to actually create your um, shader graph. And a lot of times they'll actually, if you click them here, you'll come in here and you will actually get some details of what that actual node is all about. And that kind of is essentially it in a nutshell. We go back here, we see we can uh, close out our shader. So we, here's where we can undo, redo. And we've also got a reference and brings up the reference and it's got um, kind of instructions on how things all go together and stuff to get you started. This is a really cool way to like experiment with and play around with and learn how to use shaders. And this is actually something I have long overdue to have to do it in my own life. I have to get better at shaders. It's one of those things that I just, I haven't spent the brain capacity to really, really get good at it. So whenever I go to something like Shader Toy and see what other people do, it absolutely blows my mind. And this is the kind of tool that actually will encourage me to go down that road, to really learn this stuff a bit better. Because like I said, I, I do have a certain synergy with working um, and playing around with stuff on a mobile device when I get the opportunity. Uh, I do most of my surfing now, even like with a computer, I still often am using my phone or my tablet to surf. I just, I find it a more enjoyable experience. And I actually find explorative stuff, like creating a game this way, to, to actually create shaders this way. It's really kind of cool. And then one of the cool things is, if you actually get Kodia, which I highly recommend, it's a great game engine in Lua for experimenting directly on your iPad device. Well, it is getting full support for this. So you're gonna be able to dump your shaders straight out and over. Now, one thing to be aware of though, and I think if I go over to test flight, we can see some of the details. So this is the application you need to, to actually get into the beta, but you'll see here, there are some known issues. And the biggest one I saw there is non iCloud storage providers such as Dropbox and OneDrive do not support bundles. This means bundles cannot be directly copied into cloud storage provider. So hopefully we get that fixed soon. because I think that's gonna trip up some people trying to save out 
uh, Unity bundles for as Unity shaders. Um, so unless you're using an iCloud device to get things out, there are there is a known bug right now. You also see some of the new details on here, but again, you do need to install this application in order to get into the beta. And then eventually this is again going to be commercial software. I will be interested to see where the final price is set at. I don't think $60 is going to uh, be the final result. But as you can see, it looks like I have 80 days with this guy, but I also have two weeks of the full-blown unlocked version for free. So if you are interested in checking this out, now is a great time. It does seem pretty close to feature complete. It works extremely well. Uh, I don't have any bugs or uh, performance issues or anything else so far with it. Everything has been pretty flawless, to be honest. And it, it's just a cool, well-done, uh, well-conceived program. I, I love this guy. And to be honest, I am still waiting for someone to bring something like Blender over to the iPad or the iPad Pro or you know an Android tablet or whatever. I would love to do modeling and sculpting on a tablet too, but this is one step closer. This is full shader creation and experimentation on your mobile device. If you don't have a mobile device, obviously this is a very limited use to you, but if you do have an iPad, I do highly recommend you check this guy out. And you're gonna obviously ask the question for your Android folks, no. There's no version for you guys. This is an iOS only product. And given the fact I don't think Kodia was ever ported to any other platforms, I would expect it to stay that way. It's a two-man development shop, so obviously they have to, to make limitations to a certain degree of what they do. So that makes sense. Anyways, that was um, Shade, a, a brand new shader creation program system for the iOS uh, platform. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.